So over the past month, the S&P 500 has finally stopped making new highs, down by 4.3% over the past month. The FTSE 100 fares a tiny bit better, but over the past month, it is down by 0.67%. And the FTSE 250, again, another major index, is down by over 2% over the past month. So how does all of this news affect my trading 212 portfolio? In this video, I'm going to show you everything. I'm kind of in a temporary setup right now, so I'm going to keep this portfolio as short as possible. So here is my trading 212 invest account. And as you can see, the portfolio balance is £17,779. And in my open positions now I am down by 1.91% overall compared to the last month when it was up. That is an unrealized loss of £345. Now if I go in here I only have 7 pence in free cash so pretty much all invested. So let's just go through my individual holdings and see what has happened to my trading 212 portfolios over the past month. Now you can see on the 14th of July my portfolio was looking really good, positive 1.61% and that was a return of a positive 200 and 78 pounds. So first of all, I have Walt Disney. So I have 0.12 shares in them. You can see that over the past month, Walt Disney has been doing really bad. It is below my average buying price here of $91.01, currently worth $86.02. So over the past month, not doing too well at all, down by 11.29%. And in my portfolio overall now, they are down by 6.49%. And that is a loss of only 60 pence as this was a very small holding. Now I'm not going to go over the financials in this video, but if you wanted to, you can always download the Trading 2 on 2 app and actually go through these yourself. Although I think you should always do your own research outside of Trading 212 before you start investing. Now, if you would like to sign up to Trading 212 and receive a free fractional share worth up to £100, then all you have to do is use the link in the description down below. Alternatively, if you already have the app, what you can do is hit the three horizontal lines over here, scroll all the way down until you see the use promo code section, go into that, and then here you can enter the code JUB. AIR. And once you apply the code, you can get a free share provided you signed up less than 10 days ago. Now, next, I have 35.1 shares in Vodafone over here. You can see over the past month, not doing too bad at all, up by 1.88% overall. And you can see in my portfolio, not doing too well at all, down by 19.03%. And that is a loss of £6.09. Now, you can see Vodafone still at least on Trading 212 says they pay a really high dividend yield of 10.35%. And here's a quick look at at their income statement. So next I have just a tiny amount in the Vanguard S&P 500 and that's only 0.01 shares. Quickly go into that. You can see I keep these very small holdings so that I can track some of the market, not necessarily because I am investing into them. You can see over the past month down by 4.19% and the S&P 500 over the past year has been doing really, really good, up by over 17% and this was up by well over 20% just last month. As you can see, the S&P 500 crashed because of fears that you know, a recession could possibly happen in the United States of America. The UK did actually reduce interest rates from 5.25% to 5%, which was actually quite a big drop. However, the United States Federal Reserve decided not to actually change interest rates. And as a result, I think investors thought, you know what, a lot of things can happen. So they decided to sell off a lot of the holdings. And that's why the S&P 500 is down, or at least one of the reasons why. Next, I have 0.9 shares in the Vanguard Germany all cap. And you can see over the past month, again, the German index is down by 2.96%, which is not looking too good at all. As you can see on the 5th of August, after that, we see a small recovery, but you know what, it could go either way. Short-term fluctuations are very very normal in the stock market and it's nothing to worry about if you are a long-term investor. But in either case, I'm actually up overall in my portfolio by 0.1% and that is a gain of a mighty two pence. So next I have the Vanguard FTSE All World and over the past month, they are down by 3.62%. As you can see, my average buy-in price was £104.46 and this is actually my biggest holding in my trading to want to invest account. I have 155 shares currently down by 3.46% and that is a really big negative of 561 pounds and six pence dragging my overall portfolio down this one's the big loser here you can see from the 5th of august it looks like some sort of recovery but again in the long term i'm not really worried about you know the short-term fluctuations these are incredibly normal and i'm just going to keep investing into some good etfs and i think the vanguard FTSE all world in my opinion is a good one for the long term although the short term i can't really recommend anything i mean i can't recommend anything anyway i have a pending order which i'm actually just going to cancel on screen now i'm going to pretty much try to hold this for a bit of a longer term and see what happens then. Essentially, in my trading to want to invest account, what I really want to do is to hold the funds that, you know, 
hopefully mature a little bit, gain a bit of value, and then sell them as soon as the next tax year opens. And then all I have to do is just transfer from my trading to into invest account to my ISA account. And it's very simple. I have a video on that. And I do that every year as long as I you know, can deposit about £20,000 into my trading to to invest account. So next I have 0.17 shares in Tesla. Over the past month, Tesla has been doing incredibly badly down by 23.98%. Below my average buy-in price again at £210.69. So currently in my portfolio overall, I am down by 6.97%. Quite a big hit there, but I haven't had a big holding in them anyway. And in Tesla, I am down by two pounds and two pence, not too bad. Quickly look over their financials, no dividend yield currently. And here is a quick look at their income statement. So next I have 33.54 shares in Rolls-Royce. Over the past month, Rolls-Royce has been doing really well, up by 6.78%. In my portfolio overall, they are up by a huge 197%, which is not something you see quite often. And they are up by £107.92. Again, wasn't a really big holding, but you know what? It more than doubled here, you can see. They don't currently pay a dividend yield. And here's a quick look at their income statement. Next I have 2.13 shares in PayPal. Over the past month, PayPal has been doing quite well, actually up overall by 9.71%. You can see a huge dip on the 4th of August, I believe, or on the 5th of August, and then a big recovery after that. In my portfolio overall, they are up by 3.92%, and that is a gain of £4.08. They don't currently pay a dividend yield, and here is a quick look at their income statement. So next, I have 2.32 shares in orange. Over the past month, not too bad, up by 1.4%. In my portfolio overall, up by 9.58%, and that is a loss of £2.14, so not too dear there. They do pay a really big dividend yield of 7.1%, and here is a quick look at their income statement. So next I have the infamous NVIDIA, 0.9 shares in them. Over the past month, NVIDIA has tanked superbly down by 22.35%. Being one of the magnificent seven companies, you know, people thinking the stock market in America is super overvalued, magnificent seven making pretty much the majority of the gains of the S&P 500. So guess what comes down first is probably going to be the magnificent seven companies. However, in my portfolio overall, I am still up by a massive 249%, which is bonkers up by £53.22. Now they paid the smallest dividend yield I've ever seen of 0.04% and here is a look at the income statement. So next I have 0.4 shares in Nike and you can see in the last month up by 2.43% all sorts of up and downs there. In my portfolio overall, however, they have not been doing too well, down by 28.59%, and that is a loss of £9.46. Again, not a huge holding in individual companies. Dividend yield 1.99% currently, I believe they have recently cut that. And here's a quick look at their income statement. Next, I have 0.49 shares in National Grid. Over the past month, not doing too bad, up by 3.95%. In my portfolio overall, they are still down by 2.42%, and that is a loss of 12 pence. Next, I have another magnificent seven company here, Microsoft, and I have 0.07 shares in them. Over the past month, again, we see similar profile to what we've seen with NVIDIA, another magnificent seven company, down by 12.77%, and a recovery around the 5th of August. So maybe we see the end of the crash, or maybe it's just the beginning. We never know. Short-term fluctuations need not worry if you are a long-term investor. In my portfolio overall, they are still up by 3.39%, and that is an only 77 pence gain. In Mercedes-Benz, I have 0.38 shares. And in my portfolio overall, they are down by 9.6%. And you can see it is now below my average buying price of 62.41 euros. In my portfolio overall now, they are down by 7.57%. And that is a loss of £1.57. So next, I have 343 shares in Lloyds Banking Group. And over the past month, not too bad considering everything down overall by 1.96%. You can see a huge increase until the 29th of July and a big dip and then again another recovery from the 5th of August. In my portfolio overall however it's been not too bad positive return of 28.34%. And that is an overall gain of £43.23. So next I have 79 shares in the GSPX. So this used to be my favorite one to actually try to time the market, buy and sell and hold for the long term if necessary. So this is the iShares Core S&P 500. You can see over the past month down by 4.7%. And 
It is actually slightly above my average buying price of £8.93. So I am in the positive, but I did buy this a lot later, adding extra cash to my portfolio because of course we've seen that with the crash, it presented a really nice opportunity at least right now to buy more into and reduce our average buying price if we bought it right at the top or the top we think now. Remember the top always changes. It really is just short-term noise at any point. In any case, I am up slightly by 0.86% and that is a gain of £6.00 and eight pence. Going forward, if the prices still stay around the nine pound mark or even lower, I'm just going to keep buying this as I think the S&P 500 right now is on a really nice discount. And if things continue to drop, for me at least, they are even more attractive of a price to keep buying. So next I have 6.2 shares in Royal Mail over the past month up by 2.37%. In my portfolio overall doing really, really well up by 58.7%. And that is a positive return of £7.79. Currently they pay a really small dividend yield of 0.59%. And here is a quick look at their income statement. So next I have 23 shares in IAG. Over the past month, not doing too well at all, down by 6.43%. And you can see overall in my portfolio up by 9.85%. And that is a positive return of £3.46. Next, I have 3.16 shares in H&M. Over the past month, not doing the worst, but down by 2.01%. In my portfolio overall, they are up by 10.85%. And that is a positive return of £3.74. They pay a decent dividend yield of 4.11%. And here is a very quick look at their income statement. So next, I have 0.29 shares in GlaxoSmithKline. And over the past month, they're doing pretty good, up by 4.02%. And overall in my portfolio, they are doing really well, pretty much up by 17.88%. And that is a positive return of 71 pence as this was a very small holding. Next, I have 2.01 shares in direct line insurance. Now over the past month, they continue to keep dropping down by 12.55%. Now once again, below my average buying price of 198 pence. And overall in my portfolio down by 12.25%. And that is a loss of 49 pence, which I think I'm okay with. Next, I have 18 18.1 shares in Deutsche Lufthansa and overall in the past month they are down by 5.43%. In my portfolio overall however they are down by 34.92% and that is a loss of £46.70 which is actually pretty big for this holding. Next I have 1.01 shares in Deutsche Bank. Again over the past month not doing too well at all down overall by 13.86%. In my portfolio overall however they are still up by 7.56% which is nice to see and that is a positive return of 81 pence. Next I have 1.5 shares in Delivery Hero. Overall in the past month they are actually up surprisingly by 2.53% overall and in my portfolio overall they are still down by 28.06% and that is a loss of 10 pounds and 81 pence. Next, I have one share in Carnival and over the past month doing really, really bad down by 17.4%. And that is still a gain overall by 50.57%. And that is a positive gain of three pounds and 54 pence. So next I have 21 shares in British Petroleum and over the past month down by 4.6%. And overall in my portfolio, they are still down by 17.45%. And that is a loss of £19.31. They pay a nice dividend yield of 5.34%. And here is a quick look at their income statement. So next I have 0.37 shares in BMW. Over the past month, down by 10.95%. And in my portfolio overall, they are still down by 20.49%. And that is a loss of £6.60. Next I have a very small share, 0.02 in ASML. In the past month, they are down by over 21%. And in my portfolio overall, however, they are still up by 16.57%. And that is a gain of £2.01. One pence. They pay a very small dividend yield of 0.79%. So the rest of the shares I have are all again magnificent seven companies. So we probably will be seeing the same profile. Apple 0.42 shares down overall by 7.11%. So I think Apple actually took the least biggest hit out of these companies in my portfolio overall still up by 19.89%. And that still is a gain of only 12 pounds and three pence. So next I have 1.24 shares in Amazon over the past month down by 16.42% in my portfolio overall still up by 56.36% and that is a gain of 58 pounds and 91 pence. So next I have 0.47 shares in Google over the past month down by 14.43%. Again, you can see the similar, very, very similar profile to all of these magnificent seven companies. When the seven magnificent seven 
did decrease, they indeed reduced the whole profile of the S&P 500 in pretty much the same way. You can see a small recovery on the 5th of August again. In my portfolio overall, however, these companies are still doing well, up by 23.05%. And that is a gain of a very small £11.36. Last but not least, in this trading to one to invest account, I have 0.03 shares in AMD. Now, AMD took a really big tumble down by 26.98% over the past month. You can see, however, in my portfolio overall, they are still up by a nice 69%. And that is a gain of a very small £1.38. My initial investment only being £2 here, just so I can really just track where these companies are going and see if I had put all my money in there, if that would have been a good idea retrospectively. Although I don't want to take the risk on adding to any of these positions here, I would rather put all my money into a good ETF, such as the FTSE All World or even the S&P 500. Now, if I go into my history, you can see my total realized profit and loss since starting this portfolio is up by a realized 3,110 pounds. If I go over to max here, we can see when I actually started this portfolio. So this was actually at the end of 2022, about the end of September, although I don't see it coming up here. It does say the 1st of October. So maybe right at the end of September, 2022, nearly two years into this portfolio and a realized gain of 3,110 pounds. And of course you can see my portfolio did change a lot. You can see at the beginning of this year, 1st of February, I had around £25,000, kind of went up to around £26,000. You can see then I did mass sell-off transferred into my trading to to ISA. And that is exactly how I use my trading to to invest account. I use it as a place to put my money into investments that I cannot put that is more tax efficient. For example, my trading to to ISA account because I've maxed that out. Now I'm going to show you my trading to to ISA account. So this is my trading to on two ISA account. And as you can see, the portfolio balance is £43,978. You can see that currently I have no free funds. And you can also see I've used 100% of my ISA deposit allowance of £20,000. And that is why I use my trading to on two invest account. When the next tax year starts, I'm going to try to transfer £20,000 from that account into this account over here. Now in my trading to one to ISA, I like to actually keep my life as simple as possible because I do intend to do this long term and I just invest in one fund. You can see currently in that one fund or in my portfolio overall, I am down by 2.84%. Current portfolio balance is 43,978 as I've said. So that is a negative return for the first time in a while of £1,284. You can see over the past month, things have been doing a lot worse. You can see at one point I was down by a massive 6.29%. And this was on the 5th of August. And that was a negative unrealized loss of £2,845, which actually seemed really, really hard. But in the short term, there will always be fluctuations. If we go over to the max period, you can see things look a lot different now because in the long term, good funds do grow and you can actually grow your long-term wealth like that. But in any case, let's go through my one holding. You can see this is in the Vanguard FTSE All World. This is a distributing ETF that basically tracks the whole world's market, or at least the big ones, emerging markets and also developed countries. You can see over the past month, this fund is down by 3.62%, which was a really big hit. And again, on the 5th of August, a small recovery. Now you can see I hold 436 shares and down by 2.84%, a negative £1,284. Now remember, because this is in my ISA, I can't actually purchase anything else until the next tax year when I can deposit money into it. So all I can really do is just wait here and not do anything. Of course, I'm not going to sell and realize a loss. The other option is to receive the dividend that I received from this fund and then reinvest it. But that's all what I can really do in my ISA. So I actually have tried to do some trading before and you can see in my trading two and two ISA, I have a realized profit of £4,137. You can see this was mostly buying and selling the FTSE All World and a lot of the S&P 500, and I got quite lucky over that period. This is why if I go over to the max, you can see a whole lot of ups and downs. This is because trading to one two only shows you the value here of your open positions. So if you are all in cash, then it will say zero. For this period of time, I actually held cash and it actually proved to be not the worst thing ever. And you can see here buying and then selling. And that's something I'm gonna try not to do anymore. You can see over the the past month I have not been buying and selling that's why there's no dips to zero and this is because I fully intend to keep this as my long-term portfolio into the Vanguard FTSE All World because of course in the short term there will be fluctuations but in the long term the entire world stock market is very likely to keep continuing to grow and hopefully along with my long-term wealth. So make sure to check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next video.